This program will familiarize you with the operation and troubleshooting of the Series 255 control valve with the 440 clock timer or the 460i demand control. The Series 255-440 system combines design simplicity and reliability with reinforced plastic construction. It features five cycle operation, valve discs that are held closed by water pressure, water that is automatically available during regeneration, an automatic backwash controller, a brining control valve that is built into the system, and a drive system that cannot go out of phase. The design of the 255 valve simplifies troubleshooting and servicing. To service the valve, unplug the timer, pull the sides of the cover outward, and lift it off the valve. The brine control and injector are easily accessible, as well as the camshaft, injector screen, and backwash. You're also able to observe the air check. The clear air check eliminates the need to disconnect the brine line to check the brine draw. To index the timer into the brine draw position, depress the red pointer knob with a straight blade screwdriver. Then, turn it counterclockwise to the brine and rinse position. The black ball inside the air check floats at the top of the brine solution during brine draw. As the brine draw is completed, the black ball will drop to the bottom of the air check and shut off the brine line. To proceed with further disassembly, bypass or turn off the water to the valve. Then, release the pressure inside the system by pushing on valve disc 5 or 6 with a straight blade screwdriver. Begin by checking the injector. Start by removing the injector cap with a large straight blade screwdriver or a torque wrench. With a needle nose pliers, pull the injector out. Make sure that it is not obstructed and that the throat of the injector is open. The O-rings should also be checked for damage. Remember, if you are installing O-rings, use a silicone-based lubricant. Never use a petroleum-based product, plumber cement, or gasket sealer. If you need to replace the injector, choose one of the same color. Injectors are color-coded and are sized for various size units and brine rates. Generally, white is for smaller systems, 6 to 8 inch diameter tanks. Blue is for medium-sized systems, 9 to 10 inch diameter tanks. And red is for large systems, 12 to 14 inch diameter tanks. Next, inspect the injector screen, which is directly opposite the injector. Remove the screen with a large straight blade screwdriver or a torque wrench, and then pull it out. Check to see if it needs to be cleaned or replaced. This screen is all plastic and has a heavy-duty cap. The screen provides a large surface area with a small mesh size. It disassembles from the cap for easy cleaning. The salt dial controls the amount of water fed back to the brine tank to make brine for the next regeneration. It can be adjusted with a small screwdriver. The salt dial is easily removed by rotating the pointer counterclockwise against the stop. Then, using the pointer, unscrew the cap with a small screwdriver. Two salt dials are available, a 1 to 10 pound dial and a 3 to 19 pound dial. The rubber ball acts as a flow regulator. It seats against a set of teeth. The more grooves that are exposed, the more water flows back into the brine tank. If the salt dial or ball are dirty or damaged, they should be replaced. The backwash flow control controls the backwash and purge flow rate. It can be removed with a large straight blade screwdriver or a torque wrench. The backwash control is coated with a number that corresponds to the tank diameter when using the backwash rate of standard cat iron resin. Standard backwash controls are available for 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 12 inch diameter tanks. If it's necessary to remove the camshaft to further service the valve, make sure that the timer control red knob is in the conditioned water or service position. Then remove the white nut at the rear of the camshaft. 
the camshaft can now be lifted off. A standard one-piece camshaft is available, as well as three optional camshafts. The camshaft with one gray segment is a long rinse, which extends the slow rinse and purge cycles. The camshaft with the three gray segments is an extra salt long rinse version, which doubles the amount of salt set on the salt dial. It's used for large capacity systems that have large salt dosages. The all-white camshaft is a unique water saver camshaft. It reduces the backwash and purge to the minimum amount. This camshaft is recommended for clean water applications only. The camshaft fits into the output connector on the back of the timer. It's keyed so the camshaft can only go in the proper way. The major components of the 440 clock timer are the tripper arm and time arrow, the skipper wheel with skipper pins, and the red pointer knob. The 440 timer is available with a six or seven day timer option. The six day timer is used when regeneration is required every first, second, third, or sixth day. The seven day timer allows regeneration on specific days of the week. To set the correct time, pull the tripper arm out and rotate it counterclockwise until the timer arrow points to the actual time of day on the 24-hour dial. The unit is factory set for regeneration at 2.30 a.m. However, it can be adjusted for earlier or later regeneration by advancing or regressing the time of day. To set the days of regeneration, Pull all of the skipper pins on the skipper wheel out. Rotate the skipper wheel until the day arrow points to the current day or number one. Then depress the skipper pins for the days for which regeneration is desired. To initiate a manual regeneration or guest cycle, simply depress the red pointer knob with a large straight blade screwdriver and turn it counterclockwise to the start position the unit will begin regenerating. This won't affect the normal regeneration schedule. To remove the timer, rotate the timer locking flag to the six o'clock position and pull it out. Remove the cord strain relief from the top plate assembly. Then lift the timer out of the bracket away from the top plate. A single synchronous motor provides the power for both the clock and valve indexing. To remove the valve discs, use a needle nose pliers to disengage the springs from the valve discs. Disengage all the springs. Then remove the 12 Phillips screws on the top plate. Lastly, lift off the top plate to expose the valve discs. The valve discs are self-aligning. They should be examined and worn or damaged discs should be replaced with a new set. Valve discs have decoupling grooves for easy flexing and for better sealing. There are a total of six discs. Disc one is the brine valve. Disc two, the inlet valve. Disc three, the outlet valve. Disc four, the bypass valve. Disc five, the rinse drain valve. And disc six, the backwash drain valve. If it's necessary to remove the valve body, the 255's unique separation feature is a real convenience. There's no need to disassemble the entire valve for replacement, so all plumbing connections and the distributor tube are left intact. To separate the control module from the tank adapter, simply remove the screw in the locking bar. Then apply downward pressure on the module and pull the locking bar out. Use a rocking motion and carefully lift the control module from the tank adapter. If the O-rings come off, put them back into the tank adapter pockets. That's all there is to it. To replace the control module, just reverse the procedure. To accommodate those occasions when the water conditioning system must be bypassed, the Autotroll Series 156 Bypass and the Series 156 Blending Bypass are available. 
The 156 bypass features copper or PVC tube adapters in standard plumbing sizes. It's easy to plumb in any installation and ensures simplicity of operation. The Series 156 blending bypass blends hard water with soft water. It is available with copper or PVC tube adapters in standard plumbing sizes. To install either bypass, first lubricate the O-rings and place them on the male features of the tank adapter. Then position the bypass on the back of the tank adapter. Attach the bypass onto the tank adapter using the screws and nuts provided. The bypass parts are the body, stem, end caps, O-rings, washers, knobs, and screws. The 460i is a demand-initiated timer control that is easy to operate. It features a highly sophisticated microprocessor control that measures and remembers actual conditioned water usage. A self-adjusting reserve capacity keeps the reserve to the proper minimum. A computer memory chip stores water use data even during power failures. It features a simple metering system, the Autotroll Turbine, which provides for a long, dependable operating life. To remove the cover, simply lift the cover from the back, slide it toward the timer, and off of the valve. To connect the Hall Effect cable to the turbine, insert the probe assembly into the turbine housing receptacle located on the outlet side of the turbine housing. You should hear the probe click into place. With the cover off, all controls are easily accessible. The access door, pointer knob, PM indicator, water flow indicator, our time display, and time set button. The water flow indicator on the display will flash whenever service water is flowing through the valve. This provides for easy verification of meter operation. A guest cycle or manual regeneration may be initiated by depressing the pointer knob. After a few minutes, regeneration will start and the unit will return to service in two hours. To program the 460i, gently open the access door. You'll observe a vertical row of header pins that are labeled along with a jumper that may be moved to perform the programming. The header pins are for setting the time of day, range of water hardness, and capacity values. The other three pin settings are used for custom programming or analysis. To set the time of day, Place the jumper on the two pins to the right of the word time and set the time to the closest hour. Then depress the black set button below the display for the proper AM or PM setting. A PM indicator will come on to show PM hours. To set the hardness, remove the jumper from the top two pins and place it on the next set of pins to the right of the word hardness. Depress the black set button until the correct hardness is displayed. The hardness range is from 1 to 99 grains per gallon. To set capacity, move the jumper from the hardness pins and place it to the right of the word capacity. Depress the black set button until the correct capacity in kilograins is displayed. The capacity ranges from 1 to 99 kilograins which equals 1,000 to 99,000 grains and is based on the salt setting of the brine control and the resin capacity of the unit. Reference the owner's manual for a capacity chart. After programming is completed, return the jumper to the top set of pins opposite time. The unit will not operate if the jumper is not returned to time. The Series 255-440 and Series 255-460i control valves are available with an optional high-style universal cover. The cover components fit together snugly to seal out the elements. UV protectors add extra weatherproofing protection for outdoor installations.